and welcome to today's episode of Corporate Access. Studies have shown that majority of organizations have formally quantified or are in the process of quantifying the value of private 5G networks, with 89% already allocating the budget needed for private 5G investment. MDN has taken initiative to become pioneers in providing and accelerating accessibility of 5G private networks. In MTN's line of focus, large enterprises and public enterprises in the mining and manufacturing sector will reach the telcos two top targeted verticals. To discuss MTN's mission further, our guest Sudipto Moitra, General Manager for ICT Solution for MTN Business, is joining me in studio today. Thank you so much for joining me. Please could you lay the foundation for us of how private networks is enabling the fourth industrial revolution across the continent. Hello, Zanile. Firstly, thanks for having me. When we talk about 4IR technologies, uh, we're talking about all of these modern technologies across different industry vertical. Uh, that's the reality. The technology exists. Um, but the reality that we are seeing on the continent, you know, how practically and how quickly we are implementing these technologies to get the desired outcome. And that is where I think at the bedrock of any transformation comes connectivity. And that's where, from a private network perspective, there are different technologies that we can bring to bear. And that's where the likes of 5G kind of comes in that really enables the transformation journey that helps companies to leapfrog their digital strategy you know, into creating the business for future. You're offering 5G as a solution for an industry to take and to customize itself for its needs as it evolves into, into the fourth industrial revolution. Is there home, is there space, and do you find a home for yourself to partner with different industries? When we're looking at different industries, you know, we are looking at from a 4IR perspective, all of these modern technologies like big data, uh, machine languages, algorithms, you know, we're looking at uh, the invent of cloud and the adoption of edge computing. Uh, we're looking at the digital twins, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, from a 5G perspective, um, the network that we are talking about, the private network, I think it's very important that we look at what the as-is environment of these different industries are and what is the basic that is required to, from an enablement perspective and an execution perspective, uh, to make, to implement these modern technologies of 4IR. So from a private network perspective, we, it's got like about four or five critical characteristics as many of us would know. Uh, obviously it brings the, you know, ultra low latency, it brings a very, very high speed. And what it does is then helps companies to create network which has got a very high degree of cyber resilience, cyber security. It helps the environment to create, you know, what we call customizable solution, which talks to the applications, you know, for that particular industries and adoption quickly, you know, to what the business outcomes we're looking at. And it also helps, you know, in terms of creating the use cases that is repeatable across the different industry vertical. So that's how the private network and 5G conversation brings to bear, uh, you know, some of the successes that the different industries are looking for. And speaking of um, the industries, I speak to business all the time and ultimately they've got a uh, report on profitability and production. How, does, how do they link up their ability to keep on improving, keep on producing with their competency that the 5G network brings? Every organization, every industry have their current estate of IT, uh, information technology or OT, operational technology. Um, the question is, you know, what is the digital transformation and how do they leapfrog quicker? So uh, in our experience, you know, the different outcomes that the businesses are looking at, it's about co-creation. It's about understanding what are the Lego blocks that is required from transitioning from the as is to the to be and uh, whether they are the enablers or the actual execution of the 4IR technologies in the environment. And then looking at uh, more the return of investment, as you mentioned, you know, that can be measured and tracked. And that's where I think with the pace at which 
the possibilities exist of executing across different industries. What we finding as MTN more and more in the enterprise space, the reality of doing it across the continent. Mm. Let's try and deep dive into one of the industries. I know that mining is looking at opportunities that are technology related. Is mining uh, in your in your line of sight for what's going to be good partnerships for MTN? Mining as an industry across the continent, you know, is definitely one of the key areas or key industries where the private networks can be of big benefit. Um, most, mostly in mining or for that matter any other industries, it's the use cases that drive the private network conversation. And uh, you mentioned uh, a few like health and safety, uh, optimization uh, of the current environment, which then leads into uh, you know the returns that the different stakeholders or shareholders are looking forward to. And some of the commonly used cases, like for example in mining that we are looking at, is uh, you know vehicle collision avoidance as an example. Like in South Africa, that is now a law. It has been gadgeted for some of the mines that will be audited. So it's no more good to have, but it's more a must to have that talks to the biggest parameter, which is health and safety, and to avoid any accidents. You know, similarly. I think in the mining space, we are also looking at even some of the basic use cases like, for example, uh, very specialized CCTV cameras, very uh, implementation of edge compute within the mines. And one of the things private network or 5G brings to bear is especially the mines, the areas in which they are operating, you know, the private network really gives them uh, that enablement, that network resilience, that cyber protection that helps them to implement in a ring fenced environment the outcome that the smart mining in the four IR that most of the mines are looking for. Mm. One more thing that the mines are looking for um, and many other industries is around environmental sustainability. Solutions there linked to your, your products? I think uh, as we know that uh, you know I mean the carbon emission and the other parameters that are measured uh, as part of the sustainability measure is very key. It's top of the agenda on all the mines. From an MTN perspective as part of our own vision you know we're definitely looking at solutions that are going to reduce the footprint and you know through uh, uh, the, the advent of the private networks, we're looking at how do we balancing that and then help the different industries, not just mining, but across the vertical, how do we then tick the sustainability box? Is it a unique op uh, value proposition to, to 5G in particular that organizations can now own their own private network? I, and what does, actually, what does that mean in real terms? So typically, uh, from a technology perspective, there has been di different architecture that different industries have adopted too. Whether they are consuming the network on the back of a private network or public network or hybrid network, but definitely, um, you know, on the back of 5G and the possibility that exists across different industry verticals like mining, manufacturing, you know, logistics, uh, it's to have their own network, which is, uh, you know, going to be a key enabler of some of the other technologies, both in the operational technology and IT technology, the convergence that we talk about. What have your clients have said are the possibilities of them redefining their industries based on the ability to own their own network? What most of the clients are telling us by having their own network, it goes to customizing their solution, that footprint, because now you can talk about the specific application requirement. You can talk about the data and the mining of the data across the different industries that it can lead to that effectively results in better decision making, that effectively results in the better operation, that effectively results in the other parameter. So owning your own network, you know, just gives you so much of possibilities that never existed before. And now across the industries, you know, this enabler is so critical and it's real. And it's all about the time of execution that we're looking at. Is your level of entry or ability to move the product through into the continent easy and seamless? I think from an MTN standpoint, you know, first of all, uh, we believe in the co-creation and that's a very important approach in getting this right. And what it means is when we are talking about end-to-end -end transformation, I mean talking about manufacturing, if we talk about smart manufacturing or plant of tomorrow, which is most of uh, what, the, what the companies are talking about, they, we have to work in partnership, in alliances. And what we are seeing is the barrier to the entry or the success criteria to achieve that becomes a lot more seamless where if we can work together, where 
the niche players from an operational technology perspective or information technology perspective probably always had the technology, but it never showed the results because some of the enables were, were not there. So if we work together in a co-creation way, you know, where we are looking at bringing the assets like 5G to the equation, the outcome is much better received. So the barrier to the entry, I suppose, uh, most of the companies, as you said earlier in your brief, a big percentage of the company are already budgeting for it. A lot of companies are already in the POC state. Some companies are looking at doing the POC of the technology. From an MTN standpoint, the technology works, but it's about the use case and the business outcome that each of the industries uh, that need to look at. And once the POC is successful, because we are also bringing in the concept of fail fast, you know, the, the whole waterfall methodology is not something that the businesses are looking at. So how we can fail fast on a particular use case or fail fast on a particular return of investment and then implement the success of the POCs and make it commercially viable across the different industries is what we're driving in the co-creation. It is also a great opportunity for some of the niche players playing in the IT and OT. You know, it might be a very specific PLC application company or it can be a mining company. How can we then come together and drive that transformation for smart mining or smart manufacturing mm -hmm. is probably the key to success uh, that, we, that we have to work together. If you're not using waterfall, you're probably using agile methodologies. So who is sitting around the table? So from a client perspective, it's, it's basically the business together with the IT and the OT, uh, the information technology and the operational technology people. Um, then we also work in the ecosystem of different partners. We kind of look at whether from a technology perspective, um, you know, the different OEMs that are working in the environment, from a consulting perspective, sometimes we also need to look at when we are talking about digital transformation, how do we create that roadmap? You know, that becomes very critical. Then you have got different system integrators in the ICT space that play a very important role. And then finally, you know, the niche players, you know, that are providing very specific services in the different industries. So coming all of them together, and this is where I think as MT and business, we're trying to aggregate those services and co-create this with the customer and the different role players that I've mentioned. And that's how we're working together in an agile format so that we can fail fast, we can prove the value, we can look at the commercialization and the benefits thereof, and then look at a strong rollout. Does it enable integration of current um, uh, systems that the organization is also working with? Absolutely, I mean, without integration, I think it's very difficult to kind of achieve a lot of the outcomes. And um, yeah, I mean, from an MTN perspective, as the leaders, in the digital space, the digital transformation we're bringing in, we are now focusing on very specific industry vertical solutions. And that's where we are also looking at a very reusable architecture. Because when we're talking about integration, if we have to look at doing it from scratch, though every company might have a unique uh, requirement, but through the standard and reusable architecture, we are bringing in the integration points together so that we can, uh, you know, the success that we're having in one manufacturing or logistics or oil and gas, that we can replicate that in the other industries but it's definitely an important enabler. Fantastic conversation. Always exciting to talk about technology and how it's influencing uh, the organization's architecture. Thank you so much for your time. That was Sudeep Top Moitra, General Manager for ICT Solution for MTN Business. And I hope that you enjoyed the conversation. It was exhilarating. Until next time, it's goodbye for now.